Uh, in this video, I would like to explain how to use the a priori algorithm uh, to generate a uh, frequent item sets. Uh, frequent item sets are, are used uh, to generate uh, the rules, uh, association rules uh, for data mining. Okay, so this is uh, one of the two most important uh, part of the uh, association rules uh, algorithm uh, for data mining. Okay, um, let's look at the data. Um, uh, this uh, data uh, is from the table 6.1, uh, uh, page 250 of uh, your data mining textbook by Han uh, et al. Okay, here we have uh, uh, nine uh, data points or nine uh, transactions, like uh, transaction 100, uh, including uh, 1 to 5, item 1 to 5, uh, T200, including item 2 to 4, uh, and so on. So the, uh, you can think this one as more like a shopping basket for each customer. So in you know, a customer one, when he uh, or she went to a, a Safeway, let's say she bought apple, a banana, and a cabbage. And then another customer uh, in his or her shopping basket, uh, he or she has a, uh, a banana and uh, uh, let's say ice cream. And the T300, another person's shopping basket, uh, he or she could have a, uh, a banana and a cherry uh, and so on. So from these uh, transactions, uh, we would like to uh, uh, generate uh, the frequent item sets. So when we uh, generate the fre uh, frequent item sets, uh, we should uh, have a, a minimum support count. So um, in this case, uh, in this exercise, Let's use a minimum support item count is a two. So to be significant, it has to appear at least twice in the transactions we are analyzing. All right, so now let's try to find the frequent item sets with a varying the cardinality. So let's look at a one item set, meaning uh, item set uh, with uh, uh, only one item uh, in it. Okay, so let's look at the data. So we have uh, item one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so we have uh, item sets, uh, free, uh, item sets in the, uh, so far the candidate item sets uh, with only one item uh, in each item set. So I1, I2, I3, 4, and 5. Uh, and then we need to count uh, how many times each item uh, in each item set uh, has occur occurred in, uh, in our transactions. Okay, so let's look at uh, the I1, item 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so support count is 6. Let's look at the item 2. So 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven. So support count for I2 is seven. Uh, let's look at I4. So I4, okay, one, two, two. So support count for I4 is a two. Okay, and how about I5? One, two, that's it. So two. So uh, support count uh, for I5 is two. Okay, and then uh, we need to uh, compare uh, these uh, support counts of each uh, candidate item set uh, with a, uh, a minimum uh, support uh, minimum support count, uh, which is uh, set to two. All right, so six is greater than two, so we include we include that in our uh, frequent item set. Okay, and seven is greater than two, six also greater than two. And two is also greater than or equal to two, and two is obviously greater than, uh, greater than or equal to two. So these all satisfy our minimum support count of two. So, so these are our first uh, the set of uh, item sets. Okay, so uh, from the, these uh, frequent item sets uh, with the cardinal, cardinality one, uh, we uh, need to generate a uh, uh, the another set of uh, uh, frequent item sets uh, with a cardinality two or two item sets. Okay, so uh, to do that, uh, we need to uh, uh, produce a uh, 
all possible combinations of these item sets. Okay, so we have uh, I1 and I2. Okay, I1 and I3, I1, I4, I1, I5. Uh, as you can see over here, I1, I2, I1, I3, uh, and so on. I1, I5. Now uh, look at I2. So I2, I3, I2, I4, I2, I5. Uh, okay. And then uh, I3, I4, I3, I5, and finally I4 and uh, I5. Okay. All right. So now uh, we need to count uh, uh, the uh, we need to count the uh, frequency of uh, uh, these uh, item sets. So let's look at one two. Item to one two. So one two. Okay. Transaction one hundred. So uh, one once. And uh, one two so twice, okay. And uh, one two so three times, and another one two in T nine hundred so four times. So item set uh, uh, one two uh, uh, occurred uh, four times, okay. How about uh, one three, okay? Um, so here one three, one three, one three. One three, so four times. Okay, and how about one four? Okay, one four in T four hundred. I guess that's it. Okay, let's do it one more time. How about um, uh, I five? Uh, I'm sorry, one five. Uh, so one five in T one hundred, and one five uh, in T eight hundred. So uh, it happened twice. Uh, two, so and so on. So you count a uh, uh, these are uh, support accounts for every item set, and then compare uh, each count uh, with our support minimum support count of two. So any item set uh, below two, uh, we do not include uh, in our uh, the uh, frequent uh, uh, item sets. So this is okay. This is okay. But I1, I4 is below 2, so we don't take it. Uh, same thing with uh, 3 and 4. Uh, 0 is less than 2, so we don't include that. I3, I5, 4 and 5, these are all below our minimum support uh, count of 2. So we only include the uh, item sets uh, greater than or equal to uh, uh, the 2 of uh, the support count. So these are our level two, our level two are frequent item sets. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, from these uh, uh, item sets, uh, now we need to uh, generate uh, uh, item sets uh, with the cardinality three or three item set. Okay. okay. Uh, before uh, generating our three item sets, uh, let's um, uh, make sure we understand uh, this property uh, known as a uh, priori. A property. It says all non empty subsets of a frequent item set must also be frequent. So when you have uh, uh, any uh, uh, item set, uh, all these uh, subsets of that item set also should be fre frequent. Okay. Um, so let's uh, use an example to uh, explain the concept. Okay. So um, to generate a uh, three item sets, uh, we need to join all these uh, item sets, uh, two item sets. Okay, so let's look at the first one, uh, I1, I2, I1, I3. So if you join them, uh, we can have a one, two, three item set I1, I2, and I3. And uh, if you look at uh, I1, I2, I3, all the two item uh, subsets are one, two, one, three, and two, three. Okay. And uh, if you look at our uh, level two uh, item set, uh, that includes one, two, one, three, two, three. So all the uh, subsets of uh, one, two, three are all frequent, as shown in uh, level two uh, item sets. So we include uh, one, two, and three. Okay. Now uh, let's look at the uh, uh, next one. So we can join one two uh, with a one five. Uh, okay. So if you join these two item sets, then we can have a three item set of a one two five. Uh, okay. 
So, the subsets of 1 to 5 include uh, 1, 2, 1, 5, and 2, 5. Okay? So, if you look at our level 2 uh, frequent item sets, we have uh, 1, 2, um, and uh, 1, 5, and uh, 2, 5. Okay? So, all subsets of uh, 1 to 5 are members of L2 uh, or uh, frequent item sets. So we include a uh, one to five uh, as our uh, as our candidate. Okay. okay so next one now is uh, uh, joining between uh, one three and one five. So if we join these two, and the three item set uh, will be one three five. Uh, okay. So subsets of uh, one three five include one three one five and uh, three five. So if you look at our level two frequent item sets, we have a uh, uh, one three, one five, but we do not have a uh, uh, item set of a three five. Uh, so, so the uh, uh, this one does not. Uh, so this item set uh, one three five does not uh, satisfy the uh, a priori uh, property. So we cannot uh, we cannot include. Uh, item set of 135 in our candidate. Okay, the next uh, that we can join uh, between uh, uh, 2 and 3 and 2 and 4, and then uh, 3 item set will be 2, 3, 4, item set 2, 3, 4, and uh, we do the same thing. So item set 2, 3, 4, the subsets are 2, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 5. Uh, so if you compare uh, these uh, subsets with our level two free frequent item sets, uh, three four is not there. So this one does not uh, satisfy the a priori concept. So we do not uh, include a uh, two three four um, in our uh, candidates. Okay, and then also we can join two three with a two five. Uh, okay, and then if we join two three with a two five, then it's going to be two three five. Uh, and the subsets are uh, subsets are two three two five and three five, and the three five is not a member of L two. So again, this does not uh, satisfy the a priori um, the property. So we do not include in our we do not include this in our candidate C three. So we do the same thing for uh, two four, five. Okay. So once you uh, generate a item set. Now uh, we need to count them. Okay, so if you count uh, one to three, um, okay, uh, one to three over here, T eight hundred. Okay, and um, we have uh, another one, two, three, and two T nine hundred. So it happened uh, occurred twice. Okay, how about one to five? Uh, so one to five uh, um, over here. Okay, so it happened uh, once and uh, twice, to 800. So it happened uh, uh, twice. So both uh, uh, satisfied uh, our minimum uh, support count of two, okay? So our level uh, three, level three frequent item sets uh, include now one to three and uh, one to five. Okay, from uh, these uh, level three item sets, level three frequent item sets, uh, we can uh, uh, generate a, uh, a four item sets. Okay, so if we join these two, uh, it will be one, two, three, five. Uh, okay, and then we need to check uh, all the subsets. Uh, but if you look at the data, um, there's only one uh, transaction uh, with a, a four item sets. Okay, uh, four items. I mean, so that does not include a, a minimum support count of two anyway. So we don't even have to bother uh, checking the subsets, okay? Okay, so we're done. So <clears throat> the frequent item sets from these transactions are as follows. So le the, from level one, we had uh, I1, I2, I3, 4, 5. And uh, from level two, we have a uh, 1, 2, so I1, 3, 1, 5, and so on. And from uh, uh, three item sets, we have a uh, 1, 2, 3, and the one to five, okay? Um, so from uh, these uh, uh, frequent item sets, uh, the next step uh, will be, we will generate a uh, association rules, okay? All right.